Hey everybody, welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. My name is Mike. We're back on the Timber Bridge project today. Last time we worked on this, we got these deck boards here installed just to kind of show you the process of how it's going. Now I had a lot of questions on this on the last video. Today's goal, get the rest of the deck boards across, get the ends bolted up and that finished and do my best to answer your questions. That's what we're gonna to try to do in today's video. But I've got some days coming up to get this thing finished. I'm really hoping, you know what, enough talking. Let's just, let's get to work. For starters, I need to take this board off for access so we can get these bolts on the end. There we go. And that end broke off. Look at that, that's exactly what I was talking about. Now you'll see the process later in the video if you haven't seen any, but we've been putting tar between the deck boards and this beam, and this is exactly why. You can see how much moisture collected underneath that plank. All right, well that makes me feel better. I feel like I'm actually doing it for a reason. That bolt there, we're gonna do one, two there, and add a second one. I was pretty close to all the way through last time on this. Burnt the drill up, picked up a new drill, and uh, let's see if it does any better. Okay, somebody that knows what they're talking about, riddle me something. I bought this auger bit brand new for this project. I can't get it to dig, it won't pull itself in. Auger bits are supposed to, see how they have the screw on there? They're designed to kind of pull themselves in so you don't have to shove your whole self into it to get it going. It just won't do it. But this one, I had laying around up in the barn. It's old, it is significantly duller than what that blade is, but it just, well, let me show you. This one actually pulls itself like it's supposed to. Look at it. I don't have to push on this. It's just gone. I got to reverse to back out. Oops. Break your wrist there, bud. Somebody riddle me. Teach me. Why does this one work better than this one? What should I be looking for when I'm looking for auger bits? They look identical. The pitch is very similar. I don't know. I'm betting somebody in the comment section will though. Look at it. I'm not pushing, it just pulls itself. Like a shit. Oh, it's through. You can feel it catch the lip of that other hole. Oh, that's daylight for sure. So we got that plate. Washer, and then a nut. And then this nut. And then a wrench, you guys. So excited about how well that auger worked. I forgot to clean out the joint and put glue in there. I think we can safely get rid of this fella. Boom! Logs in the creek or ditch, whatever you want to call it. It always amazes me what people get upset about. The fact that I've been calling this a creek has really got some people full scent. There we go. Oh, yeah. Where 
where's the wrench? Five bucks says it's underneath that spray foam. That gun? Oh my gosh, it is. Well, kind of. She's got a cool charred finish now. I forgot to bring soap down with me for the longer screws, but I did have some bar oil sitting in the back of the Ranger, so a little lube has to be better than no lube at all. So when I showed these the first time that this is what we're going to use for the cables to tension the cable from one side to the other, a lot of you pointed out that that is not a solid piece and over time or in a short period of time that would bend and eventually open up and cause a failure and I appreciate you guys looking out for me. I could have just went up and welded these, I'm just going to hold on to them, I'm sure I'll use them for another project that won't involve as much strain, but I just went out and picked up these instead. These zinc coated ones, they are solid like that so that should get us what we need I'm gonna go ahead and put these on each side and we'll have this side wrapped up we'll buzz this off just a little bit and then we can start putting some decking down I don't think it's worth I don't know you think it's worth squaring that up you think it matters you think it matters I don't know if it matters Now we've come this far, huh?
kidding. Well, that's all right. We'll do the same thing on that side. And I'll just meet you, I'll meet you at the planks, all right? We're gonna do that next. We're gonna use that bar oil again. This seemed to work decent last time. So last time I had eight inch screws for these. These are eight inch. You can see I picked up a different screw type too. It's because I went to a different store. And I went to get those screws for the decking. I was looking for six inch. They were out of stock. All they had was four inch and eight inch. So I went with the eight inch. But uh, like I said, I went to a different store, picked up a different brand. And uh, these are the six inch that I was hoping for the first time. So that's gonna work great. So a few people asked why I'm using anything bigger than a four inch screw. Saying anything bigger than a four inch screw is overkill. My theory for this is, and take it how you want it because I've never built anything out of timber, except for this bridge. This is my first timber project. Here's my theory. This bridge is its strongest day one. After it's built, after it's finished, it gets weaker from there on out. It's exposed to the elements, the rain, the wind, the sun, what have you. It's gonna rot, it's gonna decay, it's gonna slowly become weaker. Four inch screws might be perfect for day one, but I'm kind of building this for day, I don't know, do math, five times however many days are in a year, I'm kind of building it for that. So I'm gonna put longer screws in. That way, as some of the stuff does decay, hopefully the threads are still down in something that's good and solid, and there's still some strength there. Some people have said that I'm overbuilding this. I think there's only two ways to build something, underbuilt or overbuilt. Those are only two options. You can't perfect build something. If you perfect build something with the perfect amount of materials and the perfect amount of weight, well, like I said, after day one, it starts aging and it starts breaking down. Slow, but sure, starts breaking down. So if you built it perfectly, anything after day one, it's gonna be underbuilt at that point. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but that's where my head's at. The point is, we're going overbuilt. I don't know if that's right. But I do know we've got a lot of decking to get installed.
right now, it's identical. 69 and a half, 69 and a half. Well, we're getting close. We're getting real close, but unfortunately, I ran out of the tar I was using. Just have that little bit left and that little bit. I could probably get away with a gallon of it. I think it was like 10 bucks for a gallon and 30 for five. So might as well go ahead and buy a five gallon. We'll probably use it somewhere else on the project before it's all said and done. I need to measure. I need to measure and make sure we've got enough. What's our gap here? Two foot. That's going to be eight. Thirteen. Eight and thirteen. What is that? Twenty-one? Twenty-one plus an inch and a half. Yeah. We can get those to work there. We might just have to slide that one over an inch, but that'll work. That'll fill in that gap. Which leaves me how much on this end that I need to go mill real quick. That leaves me 33. Okay. Got a foot out of that piece. <laughs> uh, four. I can get four. Four times eight. Oh, four times eight is 32. Heck, I can get it all out of that camp. Bail out. He slipped. What do you think? Oh, I don't step in it. What is it? It's tar. Okay, yeah. I won't step in it. Why? Why can we not step on it? Super sticky, won't come off your... Oh, Charlotte did. Charlotte. Boom. Aww. <laughs> doggo. You're a goofy dog. You just go wherever you want. You used to do. Too. It's good enough for people to walk across right now, for sure. I gotta make some longer ones, Chels. But it still gets, for an example, it gets running boards like that. Here. Where are we going? I mean, I support you, but I only support you. Well, so much. I'm glad you support me, but I really need the bridge to support me. Oh, you know? Okay. I'm ready to head back to, you gonna go back to the house? Yes, I'm ready. No! Mama made some banana nut bread, and it's <gasps> delicious. She did? I'm gonna get the first bite. Too late, because I already had half of it. So anyway, uh -huh. we're gonna go back to the house. I'm gonna have that. I'll see you guys, um, I don't know, next clip. Do this one and here we go.
So now we have all the decking milled. We have this beam milled up and ready to go. That beam goes under the bridge. It goes under the two support beams those bottom logs, it goes underneath there and will hang from hardware from the top of those arch. From top of the arch, it'll catch that beam, that beam will be underneath and we'll tension that up into it to put some lift up into there. Pull down on the arches, lift up on the middle of the bridge deck. I picked up some big pieces of all thread and some angle iron today. And all we're gonna do is heat it up and make our own custom U-bolt that goes down or up and over it'll go down catch that beam underneath on both sides i think that'll work okay i mean we're gonna find out we're gonna do it and if it works it works if it doesn't then well you're gonna know pretty quick aren't we a few people have asked what if you come up crooked will you drag a trailer off the edge well yeah you, you will the plan is though right here we're just going to build a little railing on each side that will force you to drive on straight. You won't be able to come at it at an angle. We'll put a little railing there and there. And same thing on that side, a little railing and railing. It'll force you to drive on and off the bridge straight. We also had something show up that I want to show you guys, just a little update on the channel. And uh, there's something else and I'm pretty excited about it. Kinds of room. Oh yeah, hold on. That's gonna work perfect. It's about a foot on each side. A little tight for the novice drivers, but for us Indiana drivers, we shouldn't have any problem with it. This is the widest thing that'll be coming across. The tractor is, I don't know, about a foot more narrow, maybe 16 inches more narrow than the side-by-side. -side. And then of course the four-wheeler is significantly narrower. And you know, me is uh, pretty narrow too, and uh, the family. I mean, unless we walk side by side holding hands, we should be able to fit across. I don't think we'll have any issue there. Definitely gonna wanna do those railings though to make sure we come on straight as far as the approach goes. Oh, we're getting close though, aren't we? We also have the riser, the D-Box, and the 1,000 gallon septic tank delivered and ready to go for the YouTube yacht. A few people have been asking why we're not working on the septic system yet. Waiting on materials, the tank is in, pretty big part of the system. The chambers and pipe are supposed to come in next week, so we'll be jumping on that pretty soon. But I just wanna give you an update and let you know, materials are coming, they're getting here, and we'll be there soon. The other thing I wanna show you guys real quick before we finish this off, we're out at the YouTube yacht, by the way. If you're new to the channel and you don't know what that is, it is a boat-shaped, boat-themed rental cabin that we are currently building. Now, a while back, another channel called Sassafras Valley Woodworking made a ship's wheel, a custom ship's wheel to go up in the, you got the basement, you got the main level, you got the wheelhouse up here, go up in the wheelhouse. At least that's where we're gonna put it. Unfortunately, when it got delivered, well, some of the handles got broken off by the delivery service. But, Sassafras Valley is actually at the YouTube yacht to do a repair on the wheel. We'll get this thing unboxed. I'll give you an up close tour of what we got going on and what he's gonna fix. So this is the wheel he made. Now, I still got a lot of bubble wrap on it. But he made this in his wood shop. You can kind of see the metalwork through the bubble wrap here. That was done by SOT Metalworks. It's a CKS YouTube yacht. Down here it says Home Port, Derby, Indiana. I don't know if you guys can see how thin this piece of metal is, but that's pretty impressive. But that was done by SOT Metalworks. I'll put his link in the description as well. And you can see some of the joinery. Anyway, the handles, they were right here. There's one here. You can see it's not attached anymore. Those are what was broken off. And he has brought everything needed to do this repair. So that's what I'm doing this afternoon. 
If you guys want to see how this wheel was made, you got to go to Sassafras Valley Woodworking YouTube channel, link in the description, an info card, and he has how it was made. He has how he turned the new handles that he brought with him. And then also he'll obviously have the repair video that we're shooting today down in the YouTube yacht. So you definitely want to go check that out. He also has some other fantastic videos as well. We're going to get working on this thing. Next video back on the timber bridge, hopefully getting the deck done that we can actually drive across it with the side by side. You ready? Yep. I think we're ready to start. We're ready. Catch you guys on the next one.